number one in the country. The Oklahoma Sooners softball team squares off in game two of its exhibition series against a team Mexico on an absolutely gorgeous day in Norman for some Sooner softball. It's Oklahoma and the Mexican national team and complete coverage is coming up on Sooner Sports TV presented today by Bud Light. Bud Light, please drink responsibly. Along with DJ Sanchez, I'm Chris Plank. Welcome to Marina Hines Field. We're a um, uh, complete tear of her ACL and the recovery from that. So good to see Sierra. She'll bat ninth and be the DP. But leading things off, Anissa Yurtez. Shannon Sale in the circle for the Sooners, and we're ready to go on a Saturday afternoon, and the first pitch is a little low and in for ball one. There's the super senior, Shannon Sale. Really nice couple of seasons now for Sale. She was the go-to for the Sooners last season when things got shut down early due to COVID as the 1-0 is up high, 2-0. And it's, you know, you it's interesting. We've heard that term more this season than I think ever in softball, the super senior. Yeah. You yeah. know, and just... Um, seeing Shannon Sell progress even as, you know, quote-unquote the super senior, so seeing her continue to get better. 6-0 and on the season, and again as the 2-0 finds the inside corner for a strike, Terry Holt, the home plate umpire today. That's the key. Falling behind in count, she's behind 2-1 here. 41 strikeouts, 9 walks though. And the walk issue seemed to rear its head her last start here at Marita Hines Field. 2-1 has popped foul and out of play. Just underway in a weekend series, an exhibition series against Team Mexico. None of these stats count, but we kept track of them just for fun. One for three last night for Anissa Yurtez. The former Utah U played short last night in center field for today's game. Sale brings home the 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. Got her on the rise. What a start for Sale. There's one away. Great start for Sale coming back after getting behind on Yurtez, and what a payoff pitch to get Yurtez up in the zone chasing. As Sid Romero steps to the plate, she's all too familiar with this Sooner defense. Jada Coleman's in center. Jocelyn Allo is out and left with Mindy right. So the first pitch to Sid is in for a strike. So Allo in left, Coleman in center, Mendez in right. Kaylin Snow back at first, T.R.A. Jennings at second, Grace Lyons at short, Jana Johns at third, and Kinsey Hansen behind the plate today. Here's the 1-0. Swing and a miss. How many times do you think Sid Romero and Shannon Sale have squared off in practice? <laughs> Probably a few. Yeah, just what a cool experience this is for Sydney. You know, be, how many times do you think she'd be in her mind, she thought she'd be playing on a, a different team here at Marita Hines. Absolutely, positively zero as the 1-1 <laughs> one -one is poked foul and out of play. One of the all-time greats to ever wear the Sooner uniform. I saw they mentioned Marietta, California as her hometown. At first we were saying San Diego, then Temecula. Sid's got to make up her mind. <laughs> Here's the 1-2. Ball's popped up to left field. Jocelyn Allo found it, called everyone off, makes the catch. And there's quickly two away. Uh, Weather-wise, it's perfect. A little bit chilly here early on, but it's going to warm up. And our weather, as always, is brought to you by the Trails Golf Club. Where you'll experience everything you love about golf and more. 57 degrees right now, but that's trending in the right direction. Hopefully, that wind will stay a little bit calm as it is right now, just out of the south-southeast at 11 miles per hour. As Chelsea Gonzalez steps in, first pitch strike. Love to see it. Shannon Sale came out. She's dealing. I mean, she has good velocity. The rise ball. She's gotten the K and the strike, or excuse me, the K and the the pop fly from Romero. I mean, looking good so far yeah. for Shannon Sale. The you know, one is a little bit up. One ball, one strike. We'll be interesting to keep an eye too on Kinsey Hansen behind the plate today. I think they've, with the way that Lindsey Elam hit the ball yesterday, Patty Gasso feels pretty good about that rotation with Hanson catching a game and then DPing another and vice versa for Elam as the 1-1 pitch is <laughs> swinging and a miss on some pure heat. One ball, two strikes. I say that because, you know, Elam's been behind the plate for four years now working with these pitchers, and, you know, Hanson didn't catch much last year being at first base, and she's probably one of the most athletically gifted players we've ever seen here in Oklahoma, so 
Love to see her handle the pitcher. She's doing great with Shannon Sale so far as the one-two pitch is fouled back. She is, and it, what a gift it is to be able to have two top-notch catchers that you can rotate in. I, most teams don't have that. Um, being able to keep legs fresh, arms fresh, it, it's just such a, such a gift that the Sooners have between Elam and Hanson right now. As the one-two pitch from Sale is pop foul. I would argue that, ooh, the foul ball ricocheted off the top of the netting behind home plate, and it caught Gonzalez on the top of the helmet. She's smiling about it. I would argue they have three. And I know you're a big fan of Kinsey Kelso, I too. I agree. Kinsey Kelso, I'm wrong in keeping her out of that, that oh, no, conversation. I, I agree. I should have brought her up. She's fantastic. The one ball, two strike pitch from Sale is headed home. And that just misses. Good job, as we've talked a lot about catching by Hanson to try to frame that and pull it back in. And on top of that, talk about three catchers who are just, as you mentioned earlier, about Hanson, just pure athletes. Yeah. You can stick them anywhere. And we've seen each of them in different spots. Two balls, two strikes, the pitch from Sale. Swing and a miss. What a start for Shannon Sale. Strikes out two of the first three batters she faces as we head to the bottom of the first inning. Oklahoma coming to the plate after Team Mexico held scoreless in the top of the first inning. So Jada Coleman back in the leadoff spot for the Sooners. Jocelyn Alla will bat second at Tierra Jennings. Moves into the third spot with Kinsey Hansen batting cleanup. Grace Lyons in the five hole. So... Coach Gasso never going to just rest on the laurels. Gives Jada the leadoff spot back and takes the first pitch for a ball low. We mentioned Lions in the five hole. Taylor Snow will bat sixth. Jana Johns at third bat seventh. Lindsey Elam, the DP, will bat eighth. And Nicole Mendes seems to have found a nice spot in this lineup in the ninth spot. As the 1-0 pitch misses high, two balls and no strikes. Sierra Highland. Now, diehard Sooner fans remember Sierra Highland from 2017 when we went to Los Angeles, California and played in the Loyola Marymount Tournament, and she did a number on the Sooners as the 2-0 pitch is in for a strike, 2-1. She pitched back-to-back -back games against the Sooners for Cal Poly. This was in mid-March, around spring break, around this same time, March 17th and 18th of 2017, four years ago, and she shut them down. The 2-1 pitch is up high. Won the first game 3-1, to one, a complete game, one hitter. She struck out nine and did not walk a batter. Sooners had a little bit more success, but a complete game, six hitter, only allowing one run, striking out five. 3-1 is called strike. Jada Coleman thought it was ball four and started to jog down to first base. Bottom line here, and I was talking to JT Gasso a little bit about this before the game. In the staff that Team Mexico has brought here, you know, Tool McQuillan and obviously Hyman as she throws it, uh, Highland as she throws it right by Coleman for strike three. What a pitch. She bounces back from falling behind 3 1. All three pitchers have had a win against the Sooners. <laughs> and for Highland, multiple. There are very few staffs in the country that can say that, you know, that each, each one has a win. It was as impressive as I think I've seen with this team since I've been blessed enough to call games since 2016. What Sierra Highland did with a Cal Poly team back in 2017. Mexico's defense has Sid Romero at short today. A pretty nice left side of the infield. Former Sooner, former Tiger. Sanchez back at third. The 1-0 pitch is fouled back. We will not see Sierra Romero in the field. I think that'll be an interesting decision that Carlos Caro and Carlos Bernaldez have to make if Sierra is healthy. Is she someone that you can put in an infield position or not? Here's a 1-1 to Jossie. Popped foul down the left side now to play. Well, we've talked about everyone in this at bat except for Jocelyn Allo, whose hitting streak is put on hold for this weekend, but... But she would have extended it last night, right? We can, we can at least say that. It's putting that hitting streak on pause and then <laughs> knowing that she did extend it yesterday. Yeah. One, two pitch is a swing and a miss. On a heater up and away, so there's quickly two away. And Highland kind of picks up where she left off against the Sooners. And you know, Highland, she's done a good job so far in getting that pitch up and away. Allo just couldn't hold off, but Highland is, she is working all different quadrants of the plate right now. Up, down, left, right. 
First pitch to Tiare Jennings is a little low for ball one, and she's doing it while she falls behind on Couts, which is something I know that is key for the Sooners today. But in general, let's hit our Riverwind keys to the game for DJ Sanchez. Riverwind still the one. It is, and for the Sooners, we saw a very aggressive team last night in all facets, in the box, on the base pads, in the circle. So that... We need to see that again today. Stay aggressive. Keep the pressure on Team Mexico. And strike early. The Sooners scored in the second inning, and that just rolled over. That momentum stayed with the Sooners all game. 2-0 pitches up and away. And Highland, I'm pretty sure, has fallen behind every batter she's faced so far. She's been able to rally back for two strikeouts. But a 3-0 count here to the freshman T.R.A. Jennings back in the three-hole. Here's the 3-0 pitch. You know, and the, the unspoken golden rule as a pitcher, do not work behind the count. However, <laughs> I think Sierra Highland is sort of that, she's that pitcher to a certain extent trying to get batters to chase. Tiare Jennings will take the 3-1 pitch up high for ball four, and she'll trot down to first base with Kinsey Hansen coming to the plate. Kinsey Hansen has... Really made a nice spot for herself in the five hole. She had been the five hole hitter for the Sooners the last seven games. But for the first time since the third game of the season, Hansen has moved up to the cleanup spot. This is that moment where we remind you it's an exhibition. So Patty Gasso may be able to tinker with the lineup a little bit and see if she can try some different players in different places. First pitch to Hansen is a fastball, swing and a miss. That and just see what works. I mean, there are so many different tools in this lineup, and to have the opportunity to say, all right, we're going to switch things around just a little bit. What, how are we, not that run production has been an issue for the Sooners, but how can we be the most productive? Well, one pitch swing and a miss, and I think Sierra Highland hurt us. She's not going to fall behind <laughs> when it comes to Kinsey Hands at 0-2 count. Scoreless here early on between Oklahoma Team Mexico, a two-out walk to Tiare Jennings, who stands at first. Here's the 0-2 pitch to the Sooner catcher, and she reaches and pokes one foul. All the way to the gate past the Sooner hitting complex beyond the temporary bleachers down the right field line. Well, again, I don't feel like we can call them temporary anymore. Here's the 0-2. Pop foul behind us. Are those pre-COVID and I know post-COVID will be full as Absolutely. usual. Good crowd here today. We're allowing a percentage of fans. So for those that are catching the broadcast on the TV side, you'll see a good crew out in right center field and left center field, well spaced out here on a Saturday morning. Hanson pops the 0-2 foul and out of play. Hanson's got a good battle going here. Well, she's falling behind 0-2, but by no means is she giving anything at the plate right now. No, and we're seeing Highland again. I, I'm, I have never had the opportunity to watch Sierra Highland live. Um, I en I'm enjoying it so far. I mean, she, she has a plan, even though she looks like she may be falling behind, maybe out of the zone. It's part of her game plan. Just missed on that 0-2 out. Palacios tried to pull it back in a bit. One ball, two strikes. Runner first is Jennings. One-two. Ripped into left field, a base hit. Kinsey Hansen falls behind 0-2. And turns on one to put the Sooners in position to jump out early, like DJ Sanchez talked about in her keys to the game. With Grace Lyons coming to the plate, and all Grace Lyons did was hit a first inning, or pardon me, second inning home run last night. Pardon me, third inning home run last night. Needed the score sheet <laughs> to be updated. That's on me. First pitch swinging, and Allen threw it right by her, strike one. Good night, by the way, for Grace Lyons. Went two for three with two RBIs and a, run, a couple runs scored and that home run. She digs in with runners at first and second of a scoreless game. The 0-1 popped up. 
Could be trouble at second base, but doing a good job to range out and shade her eyes as Gonzalez and makes the catch just on the grass in right field. We head to the second. Oklahoma and Team Mexico are scoreless on Sooner Sports TV, presented by Bud Light. Sooners strand a couple in the bottom of the first. We headed the second of a scoreless game between the Sooners and Team Mexico in this exhibition, and the first pitch is a strike. The kid, Kentucky alum, Brittany Cervantes, in left field again today. Boy, she did not like that call. In a very polite way, it appeared, asking Terry Holt where it was as the 0-1 has popped up foul and out of play. I think a great pitch by Shannon Sale, and I think Cervantes had a little bit of pause from that call because I think we saw the same pitch from Highland a couple times last inning get called for a ball. Cervantes had the first hit last night for Team Mexico. She led off the second inning with a single and was stranded at second base. She's behind here 0-2, and Sale, boy, just misses, maybe a little low. A ball and two strikes. Good spot, though. Scoreless game between Oklahoma and Team Mexico in a game where records don't count, but obviously that 11-0 win caught some eyes last night as the 1-2 pitch up high, two balls and two strikes. And we did get clarification. You might see that Tori Vidalis is in the on-deck circle, not in front of Team Mexico's dugout, but in front of the Sooner dugout. As the 2-2 pitch from Shannon Sale is headed home. She fouls it straight back. That is something that is common in international softball. You can see a little bit in the background the TV side of Vidalis waiting on deck. There she is. She's standing in front of the wrong dugout. But that's commonplace in international softball. We are talking about it last night. That wouldn't end well in Big 12 plays. A 2-2 has squipped back to sale. Throws to first to retire her fourth straight batter she's faced, and there's one away. Shannon Sale looks great. I just hitting spots, good velocity. Check the ball. I think it cut it off the cap of the bat. <laughs> yeah, I got told when I got home by my husband, he goes, you need to brush up on your international rules. <laughs> and I go, well, I, guess I didn't think she was supposed to be over there. I did, too. If it wasn't for... Allison Fanning with Team USA, I would have been, I would have been wondering why there wasn't like a nuclear louche pitch. And that's what I was thinking. In the <laughs> ear, hit the ball. Here's Vidalas. Righty on righty matchup here, and Shannon misses a little in. Tori Vidalas went 0 for 3 last night, was a strikeout victim of G. Juarez, as we talk about the Sooner offense so much this year. So encouraging to see a great outing from G. Juarez like she had last night. Good to see this star from Shannon Sale as the 1-0 breaks outside. Two balls and no strikes. Yes. I, as dominant as G. War, and she was absolutely dominant last night. We're seeing the same start here from Shannon Sale. I mean, especially knowing that Big 12 Conference plays right around the corner, to have that back-to-back -back punch of... G. War is in form like she was last night, and then seeing Shannon Sale come out here and, again, continue that dominance that we saw into into the end of the game last night. 2-0 after a quick visit to the circle is lifted to left field. Alo has a bead on it, makes the catch, and there's quickly two away. She's retired the first five batters that she faced. Shannon Sale, through the first majority of the season, had only allowed one walk. That would be through her first seven appearances. In her last four, she had walked eight batters in 12 innings. So in her first 13 innings, she had walked one. She would walked eight in her last 12 innings, but off to a good start here as the first pitch is in for a strike to Amanda Sanchez. One of those was the five-walk performance that we saw against Houston. But she's bounced back. She's bounced back and has looked great in her last two appearances, including an inning of shutout work against Liberty and the Sooners' run rule win in that second game on Sunday. Here's the 0-1. Little up, one and one. She hasn't. What? A, you can't. You can't time this even any better. And I know. I keep saying I, I'm really excited for conference play, <laughs> but it's right <laughs> around the corner. But I mean, Shannon Sale is in mid-season form right now. One ball, one strike to the former LSU and Missouri Tiger Amanda Sanchez. The pitch popped up. 
shallow right center field. Jennings races out and makes the catch. That was a tough one. But the Sooners starting off hot thanks to Shannon Sale. We head to the bottom of the second inning. We're spor scoreless between OU and Team Mexico on Sooner Sports TV. As we head to the bottom of the second inning of a scoreless game between Oklahoma and Team Mexico. First pitch from Sierra Highland is in for a strike. Highland worked out of a two-out jam in the first. After a four-pitch walk to Tiara Jennings and an 0-2 single to left field by Kinsey Hansen. And the one pitch is up high, one ball, one strike. Along with DJ Sanchez, I'm Chris Plank. Grant Wade, our producer in the Sooner Vision Studios. The TV side of things, the 1-1 is laced foul and over the backstop. There's a fan walking, I say the backstop, the temporary bleachers. There's a fan that was walking along that nearly made a one-handed catch. Did you see that? I saw him and <laughs> saw him drop it at the end. I was like, oh. And then he played it off. Well done, sir. Yeah, it was kind of impressive. Eric King is our radio producer, as he has been most of the season. One-two pitch. Hit that same way, but off the netting. We'll be on the road in Ames next weekend. And knock on wood, the weather forecast looks pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. For now. I don't want to jinx it. I, as soon as you say Ames, I start thinking cold. <laughs> oh, one, two. Boy, that just missed inside. Good pitch. Two balls, two strikes. I haven't checked it in three days, so I think I'm going to go check it again right now. <laughs> I drive to Ames. It's this weird thing I have. It was my very first trip I ever got to make with the Sooners, so I drove there, and they won, so it's like a superstition thing. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Popped up on the infield. Easy play for Sanchez, who makes it, and there's one away for Jana Johns. I'm very nervous doing this right now to see what, how much the weather you. <laughs> has shifted in Ames next week. But, and by the way, beyond the weather, Jamie Pinkerton has done an outstanding job with that team. They smoked St. Louis U yesterday, beat them in run rule fashion. They've got two more games up in St. Louis against the Billikens. They were ranked earlier in the season. They've had a really nice start to the season. First pitch of Gianna Johns is fouled at the play. Highland's starting to change speeds a little bit keep these Sooners off balance, but it's exciting for me to see Iowa State have the turnaround they have had since Coach Pinkerton's been there. He's really done a tremendous job and, you know, putting when Iowa State and, again, I, I get excited for the conference. Yeah. It's, it's good for the conference. It's good for OU softball. It's good for Big 12 softball. And one pitch is a little off the plate. One ball, one strike. Okay, there it is is a little bit of a concern here because <laughs> suddenly on Saturday and Sunday there's uh, a percentage chance of rain as the 1-1 is high. But I will say every single day in Ames there's some percentage of chance for rain. I mean even, yep. I mean every day next week. But the good news is the weather appears to be in the 50s so that's a good sign. The 2-1. Swing and a miss on the rise. As long as it's not snow. Snow is a possibility. Uh, we're good on snow. Knock on wood. <laughs> Everything is very fluid because on Tuesday, they've got a 96% chance of rain and a high of 48. So, But OU and Iowa State next weekend in Ames. It should be fun. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Johns takes ball three that did not miss by much. And, uh, a visibly frustrated Highland kind of throws her hands out. It, I, I understand the frustration. I, I'm going to be honest. Uh, I'm not completely sure where that missed, but good discipline on Janet Johns' part. But, I mean, that's, that's a pretty solid two-strike pitch. 3-2, swing and a miss. Two away. Sierra Highland with her third strike out of the game, and here's Lindsay Ely. Highland, this is the same pitch that just got called a ball. Jana Johns, again, chases. We see her trying to pull that outside pitch a little bit. But Sierra Highland so far has been very solid, throwing great pitches, hitting good spots. She's working deep into, into counts. But, again, I feel like that is part of the way she finds success as we get the swing through with the rise ball up in the zone. Beautiful pitch to start the at-bat with Lindsey Elam for strike one. Boy, what a night. For the senior, uh, the sooner senior captain, as she takes the 0-1 pitch, a little out, one ball, one strike. Four hit game for Lindsay Elam. Last night was fun to watch all the way around, but I I had a blast watching Lindsay Elam last night. I mean, just just having strong at bats, 
Got a good swing there. She fouled it back. You know, and every time she got to first base, we saw this big grin on her face. You know, and I love it. It's just awesome to see. Well, and it's wild to think that in a lineup where you know, Grant Wade had the graphic for us where, you know, four, you had four batters, five total that were hitting over 500, and four of them were one, two, three, four in the lineup. The one, two is sky pretty deep to center field at the track, at the wall. Lindsey Elam goes yard. A bomb over the center field wall has staked the Sooners to a 1-0 lead. Lindsey Elam, have yourself a weekend. Her fifth hit of the weekend, and the bomb gives the Sooners the lead early. The second inning, Elam does it again. She did it yesterday with the RBI single, and here with the bomb to the deepest part of the field. And this was not wind-aided. This was all. gone all the way. What a shot, Lindsey Elam. And I was about to say, you know, we have this. There are five batters that regularly play for the Sooners that are hitting over 500. Four of them hitting one through four. Lindsey Elam statistically is having a good season, but it kind of pales in comparison to what's going on around her. So she is having one of those, hey, don't forget about me kind of a weekend as, Linz, as Nicole Mendez takes a first pitch high for ball one. I will say there are a lot of lineups in the country who were wishing that their 8-9 hole <laughs> were hitting over 300, hitting over 350. Now, that's not an easy spot. And the Sooners 8-9 spots as the 1-0 pitch is in for a strike to Mendez. Last night in the 11-0 win over Team Mexico, with Elam's four hits, Mendez went two for four. The 8-9 spot in the lineup was six for eight with two runs and three RBIs. 1-1 one, one swing and miss. And it's off to a good start here with the home run from Elam. You know, you were talking earlier, Plank, about Mendez finding, kind of finding some footing there in the nine hole. What an unbelievable lineup to have. <laughs> Lindsey Elam in the eight. Mendez swings through the rise ball to go down on strikes, but damage is done for the Sooners in the second. We'll talk more about that lineup and the options that Patty Gasso has as the game rolls on, but Lindsey Elam with a bomb to center field to stake the Sooners to a 1-0 lead as we head to the third on Sooner Sports TV, presented today by Bud Light. Sasha Palacios leads things off and takes the first pitch outside for ball one. Immediately, Carlos Caro over the third base coach's box waves Stefania Aradias in the on-deck circle over to talk to him right in front of the Sooner dugout, which is so different. 1-0 is bounced back up the middle, cut off by lines. Oh, it bounces off her glove into center field. Tough play. And Team Mexico has its first base hit runner on it's already been ruled a hit the base hit back up the middle don't think there's much question about that there's not and you know we kind of hold our breath because grace lyons is grace lyons yeah. and we've seen her make that play but that that is a tough tough play that's a big time play that's a single all the way up the middle the wild thing is grace lyons is so good at covering yes. that ground i would say 90 percent of the time she makes that play she does and and she knows it too so all right, Dale shows bunt, lays it down. It's a beauty, but Janet Johns came and made the play and tagged her somehow. One away, Palacios advances to second, but Johns was charging in, and as she made the play on the attempted sacrifice bunt, she just never stopped. And, and, and it didn't. It didn't hurt that. Aradias did run a little bit more towards the circle. Like she curved out just a bit, and Johns wisely just tags her out. One away, but a runner in scoring position for Sierra Romero on a swing and a miss. That was, had Janet Johns had to make that throw, that would have been a tough throw because she was coming all the way across. Completely across her body, mm -hmm. yeah. So what a play. Carlos Cara has called for time to chat quickly with Sierra Romero. Can, you can tell a bit the bulky brace that she has that she's wearing on her left knee. She celebrated her birthday yesterday. Getting an opportunity to get back in the starting lineup here today. The 0-1. And for a strike, 0-2. 
I like, you know, I know Romero coming off of the injury, kind of battling her way back and, and still working through some of that. I love the lane down the bunt. One out, runner on second. Here you go, Sierra. Let's little go. small ball for mm -hmm. a RBI machine in Romero as that 0-2 pitch misses outside. McKenzie Hansen's going to jog back out. Shannon Sale was kind of looking, and Kenzie's like, okay, let's make sure we're on the same page here. They're not going to get much time. Terry Holt, like, listen, we got lunch plans here. Let's go. <laughs> got a round of golf to play let's this go. afternoon. It's a beautiful day. The wind's dying down. One ball, two strikes with a runner at second. The pitch from Sale popped up. On the infield, Jana Johns calls off everyone and makes the catch. And there's two away. Big out there for Sale. Getting Romero to try to pull the outside pitch. And that will turn the lineup over. Here's Anissa Yurtez. She struck out in the first. One for three last night for the... Shortstop last night, center fielder today, and she fouls the first pitch back for strike one. I'll tell you what, and I know we're not seeing Urtez at short today, but I was impressed <laughs> with just her level of play, and it just it looked easy, it was clean, um, very impressive defensively last night for Urtez. Here's the 0-1 pitch from Sale. Well outside, they'll throw behind the runner at second, but Palacios back easily. I, again, the, the system of understanding the calls and you've got the, the wristband with the numbers that coincide with pitch location, the pitch they want. Felt like a couple of times Shannon's taken a little bit longer look than you typically see, so maybe that was one of the reasons for seeing Hanson head back out there as the 1-1 pitch is fouled back. Yeah, and you know, those, I stand by, I love the pick-proof cards, I think they're awesome, um, and sometimes though, I mean, it's very rare you see missed signals with it, but every now and then it happens. Um, you know, I think a, a fear at first was it was going to slow the game down, Yeah. Um, you know, but when you see that long, hard look, Hanson may be like, do you have the right card? Is it, <laughs> <laughs> you know? If you uh, knew the number of cards that they have, <laughs> your mind would be blown as the one, two pitches in the dirt, and Hanson does a great job blocking yeah. that. Um, I've, I've unfortunately had to ask that question to a player before, <laughs> and I did not like the answer. But, uh, you know, you, you get a missed signal with those cards because they're so... Um, they're pretty, they're pretty straightforward. Um, after you have learned them, you kind of go, let's make sure we're all, we're all matched up here. 2-2 two -two pitch. Reached and poked foul towards the Sooner hitting facility. Foul territory down the right field line. There might even be a case where later in the game you, you see a player emerge from the dugout with a card that they'll run and waving their yep. arm, give them the right one. <laughs> well, and there's no doubt, too, even though even though the cards make it tough to pick signals, yeah. I guarantee you there is someone whose job in the dugout. Oh, what a pitch. What a pitch from Shannon Sale. Called strike three right on the inside corner to retire your Tez for her third strikeout of the game. We head to the bottom of the third. Sooners leading 1-0 over Team Mexico. Up the lineup for the Sooners here in the bottom of the third inning. Oklahoma leads at 1-0 on the solo home run from Lindsey Elam. Jada Coleman takes the first pitch from Sierra Highland low for ball one. I'm interested to see what adjustments make after her first at bat for Jada Coleman. The leadoff spot for the first time since March 6th. Saturday game against ULM as the 1-0 is slapped foul. Yeah, I mean, Highland outside of the bomb by Lindsey Elam, I mean... Four strikeouts first time through the lineup. I mean, that's a pretty, we don't see that very often. So I think we're going to see these Sooners working second time through of trying to get Highland. Ooh, swing and a miss on a pitch well outside. Try to work her maybe a little deeper in counts? Well, she's working deep in counts, but one thing we're seeing a lot from the Sooners, too, is um, we just saw it here with Jada Coleman chasing off the plate. And, you know, when those pitches get taken, so being a little bit more disciplined. 1-2 is bounced to short. Going to be a tough play for Sid. Got her. Oh, Sid Romero. Why you got to do us like that? One away. I like her better on our side. 
but what a play. And you can't place it much better than that. Sid Romero was all over it. We got the high hop early. And what a play, just getting rid of the ball quick on the run. Still close at first. I would probably go out on a limb and say that of the, ooh, bang, bang play at first. If I was the first base coach, I'd be signaling safe. As Jocelyn Allo takes the first pitch up for ball one, as Jennifer Rocha did. Allo a strikeout victim in the first inning, which, again, stats not counting here, but we've only been her fourth strikeout of the season, which is amazing. Here's the 1-0 to Allo. Takes it for a strike, 1-1. One one. I'll say this, too, about that play by Sid. Uh, you've got a lot of really good shortstops in the Big 12. I don't think many are going to be able to make that short that play and get Jada Cole. Nope, and I know, uh, thank goodness for us, Grace Lyons makes that yeah. play. <laughs> Here's the 1-1. One, one. <laughs> She's just, on wow. our side. 2-1. Uh, it was interesting because in our conversation with Jada Coleman this week, well, Jada's a left-handed shortstop by trade. And those are rare. She said she wanted to be the first left-handed shortstop to play in the Women's College World Series. As the 2-1 pitch to Allo is hammered, is it deep enough to left field? Not quite going to get to the wall as Cervantes makes the catch, and there's two away. But Jada said, I got here to Oklahoma and started playing around Grace Lines, and I realized, okay, all right, so they've got shortstop taken care of for a couple of years. I'll, I'll work wherever they need me. And then quickly her goal started to adjust from being the first left-handed shortstop at the College World Series to just wanting to win the World Series title. So I love it. I think that opportunity will come for her as the first pitch to T.R.A. Jennings is a little up. Oh, yeah, and I, I will say, left-handed shortstops are a rarity. Left-handed second baseman. I, I've seen uh, Texas A&M had a left-handed second baseman about seven, eight years ago. 1-0 pitch is looped into center field. This could be trouble, and it falls for a base hit. T.R.A. Jennings has been on both times here this afternoon. For the Sooners, it's their third hit of the game. Oh, left-handed second baseman at A&M. I remember that. Mm -hmm. And she was she was a stud, but n a rarity. Tiari Jennings just keeping it going, finding a way to get on base. Natalie Villery. That's her name at a &M. Yes. Actually won a couple Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year honors as yes. a left-handed second baseman. So it's not as if it hasn't ever happened. Here's Kinsey Hanson. She singled her last time up and swings through the first pitch from Highland for strike one. In fact, Hanson fell behind no balls and two strikes to Highland before she got a base hit. She did. And, you know, again, kind of talking about some of the adjustments we're going to see, we see Hanson getting down 0-1 on a pitch that was out of this, clearly out of the zone. Um, and again, that's where Highland is going to start having success. That's where she's going to skitter K's. Well, one is a little bit off. But getting hitters to chase outside of the zone. If you can lay off those close, tight pitchers, uh, pitches or the pitches up in your eyes, then we're going to start seeing the walks. We're going to start seeing Highland work deep into counts and behind on batters. One ball, one strike. Long look from the Cal Poly product who brings it home, and it's fouled straight back. And this is a pretty impressive stretch in the Sooner lineup. You saw Alo as Hanson digs in. All hitting over 500. 547 for Alo. These stats don't count this weekend. 531 for Hanson. And Jennings, Coleman, and McKenzie Donahue, I'm pretty sure we'll see today. All hitting over 500 this year. As Hanson just gets a piece of that. As this game progresses, DJ, and maybe even through tomorrow, I'm fascinated to continue to learn from you the challenges for a hitter of trying to lay off that rise ball, right? It's, it's, I don't want to say it's impossible. It is hard because it looks like it's right in the zone, and the next thing you know, it's right over your head. One, two, fouled off. Ooh, that looked like it hit Palacios pretty flush. You know, in the rise ball, it is a high-risk, high-reward pitch. Ugh. Blossom. Right in the face mask. Mm, yeah. Little rattled is Palacios. Coach Caro comes out to check on her. I don't know about the true depth that they have behind the plate. Brittany Cervantes, who's out in left field, is listed as a catcher as well. 
but it looks like Palacios is going to be okay. When you say high risk, high reward, you time that bad boy up, it's going to go. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, but a good rise ball, man, you know, a lot of times your high strikeout numbers come from rise ball pitchers. And it's, again, but if you lay it flat, you better duck or turn your head quickly. One, two pitch is a little bit up and away. Two balls, two strikes. You know, and we've seen Highland work up in the zone a lot. Um, but something that, again, she does well, she's working all quadrants. We've seen her work up, and then we've seen her really drop in low on the outside corner. 2-2, two -two, back up the middle, base hit by Kinsey Hansen. Give Kinsey Hansen two hits on the day. The Sooners, as an offense, are now pounded out four hits through two and two-thirds. Yeah, and Hansen here... We, I don't think Highland got that curveball where she wanted it, but great job by Hansen of taking it right back up the middle. Well, Grace Lyons gets her second opportunity with bat with, uh, to bat with runners on base. So far, only Kinsey Hansen and Grace Lyons have had the opportunity to have an at bat with runners on base today. In the bottom of the third, Sooners up 1-0. Lyons' first pitch swinging, fouls it back for strike one. Halen Snow waits on deck. Lions, we mentioned the, the lineup shift that has taken place a bit today with Lions hitting in the five hole. As she swings through the 0-1, they throw down to first. Hanson a little bit off, but she gets back safely. Lions hadn't hit in the five hole for the Sooners since the Sunday game against Sam Houston on March 6th. Pardon me, March 5th. She hammers this one a mile foul. A, kind of a, a, an area beyond the Sooner locker room. I think there used to be maybe some cages over there. But they were. Kind of cleared that out. That's a team meal area now because there's plenty of room for spacing. The 0-2 is up high, 1-2. and two. See tables and chairs that are set out. And Grace Lyons bounced it right off the barrier of that on that foul ball. Thing was straight, it would have been long gone. A one two, which is a post of foul. We're kind of seeing, you know, Highland here. She's got two strikes here on Lions. Worked way up in the zone, and then we see Lions chase. I mean, that pitch was nearly in the other batter's box. <laughs> so again, Highland working when she's ahead, really expanding the zone. One, two, well outside, gets away from the catcher, Palacios, off to third is Jennings. Kinsey Hansen will trot to second. First runner, the Sooners have had at third base. First runner at third for either team so far here this afternoon as Oklahoma leads it. One zip, bottom of the third. The second inning, Lindsey Elam home run. Oh, you looking for a clutch two-out, two-strike hit here from Grace Lyons. The pitch. Sky to shallow left field. In fact, Romero's going to range out and make the catch. With just a couple feet on the outfield grass, and the inning is over. But Oklahoma puts a few more hits on the board. We head to the fourth. Oklahoma leads it 1-0 on Sooner Sports TV, presented by Bud Light. As the Kansas City Roos knocked off Oklahoma State, handing the Cowgirls their second loss of the week. And Sid Romero had a base hit stolen from her on a first pitch line drive right at Jana Johns. And there's one away. Talk about reaction. And just, you can't hit a ball much better than this. It's just one of those things. And great job by Jana Johns, making it look easy. Here's Chelsea Gonzalez. Sid has been attacking the first pitch so much this weekend, we haven't been able to brag about it. <laughs> As Chelsea's first pitch misses outside. She has, she's hopped in that box. I think she's swung the first pitch almost every <laughs> at-bat. Gonzalez was a strikeout victim in the first. The 1-0 is just off the inside edge. Two balls and no strikes. Well, I mentioned it was a, a fairly wild night in the Big 12, at least. We're not in true Big 12 play, but in the Big 12 teams that were in action. As the 2-0, boy, that's in two, ball three. The Cowgirls of Oklahoma State had played two in what they're calling their Mizuno Classic. They won the first game 11-2. 
Uh, and then we saw that very good Kansas City team that beat them last night, 6-5. to five. Uh, And then, you know, knowing what Oklahoma had done when they played New Mexico a couple of times this year, to see that Texas and New Mexico were a 2-0 game as there's a four-pitch walk to Chelsea Gonzalez was a little bit shocking. But Texas leads 7-0 to game eventually, or today eventually won that game last night, 5-3. I gave the wrong final score for the Iowa State game. They actually beat St. Louis U last night 11 to 2. Oh. So pretty impressive win as Patty Gasso is going to jog out and chat with Shannon Sale. That was a hard hit ball from Romero. So after that, you know, to see the four pitch walk to Chelsea Gonzalez, maybe Patty Gasso just wants to calm down Shannon Sale here a little bit, you think? Absolutely. I mean, Sale has been, she has looked good. Her misses have been quality misses. And then we kind of see the line drive by Sidney Romero, the four pitch, again, four straight balls that were not real great misses mm -hmm. to Gonzalez. And then, again, we're kind of going through the heart of this, this Team Mexico lineup here. Just kind of get back to what you're doing. Use your defense. Hit your spots. And let's see this defense get challenged in a one-run game as the first pitch is low. I don't think that Cervantes went. They checked to first, and she did not. Terry Holt behind the plate. Larry Nagel over at first. Jason Kimper is our third base umpire, though he is positioned behind second base with a runner at first. 1-0. Fouled straight back. Good cut. Cervantes won for three last night. Bounced one back to Sale. And her only at bat so far in the second inning. When the fourth, the only run of the game, a solo shot by Lindsey Elam in the second inning. Sooners lead it 1-0. Here's the 1-1 pitch from Sale. Off speed, she waited on it, loops it towards short. Nice play by Lyons. And there's two away. It's a big time pitch from Shannon Sale. It, the off speed pitch, we haven't seen her change speeds a ton. But great timing for it. And again, catching Cervantes off her front foot. A little bit out in front and didn't have anything behind it. Here's Tori Vidalis. She flied out to left her last time up, hit it pretty hard. She swings at the first pitch and hits this one to shallow center field. Coleman comes racing in to make the catch, and the inning is over. Sale works around a four-pitch walk. She's been fantastic, allowing just one hit so far. The Sooners lead it 1-0 on Sooner Sports TV. Sooners lead it 1-0 as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Taylor Snow will lead things off for the Sooners. First pitch to the Sooner left-handed hitting first baseman is in for the strike. Sierra Highland back to work. She's been pretty solid so far for Team Mexico. Three innings, scattering those four hits. The only run on the solo home run by Lindsey Elam with two outs in the second. It's the 0-1 pitch is a little low and in. One ball, one strike. Four strikeouts, one walk so far. We've thrown 59 pitches. I haven't had an opportunity to really go in-depth with Coach Caro or... Ronaldez as the 1-1 one, one pitch just misses, 2-1, and one, to see if there is any limit for any of their pitchers this weekend. I don't think there is. I'm pretty sure that we'll see Highland again tomorrow with the way she's throwing here today. The 2-1 is ripped foul. And, you know, we've had the opportunity to see the majority of the Team Mexico staff, and I have really been impressed. I know she's given up the bomb back in the second, but I've really been impressed with Highland and what she's, what she's doing so far. 2017 grad of Cal Poly, 2-2 pitch. Popped up, shallow center field, and falls for a hit. Kaylin Snow has a base hit, and the Sooners here in the bottom of the fourth inning for the first time tonight, or this afternoon, one of these days I'll realize the sun's up. Have the leadoff hitter aboard. And for Taylor Snow, her second hit of the weekend, she won one for four with a run scored in a couple of RBIs last night. Here's Jana Johns. Strikeout victim when she stepped in in the second inning. Lindsey Elam waits on deck. Elam's had a five-hit weekend. First pitch is up and away for a ball. I think it'll be interesting. we got a tight game. We're getting about midway through if we start to kind of see some of the short game come out. Hit and run, running hits, laying down a bunt. Look where Vidalis is playing. She's a couple steps in front of the bag and was almost charging 
during that last pitch. Fairly tied at third for Sanchez, too, who's a few steps in. Johns does show bunt, missed it. One ball, one strike. I really like that pitch in the bunt situation. Going up and in? Yes. <laughs> Highland, if there is one thing that I've noticed so far, and it's it's one of the things that not, pitchers work fast in softball, she's deliberate. You know, she'll walk to the back of the circle. She'll take her time. She gets in there, though. She's ready to go. There's a 1-1 that's popped up. Could be trouble. No. Nice play over the shoulder at second base by Gonzalez for the first out of the inning. Lindsay Elam has had herself a weekend, including this bomb to the deepest part of the field. No doubter to center field from Lindsay Elam. She, there's that smile again. Again, <laughs> she is seeing the ball well. Good to see Lindsay Elam hitting it as well as she is here today. And yesterday. And hopefully tomorrow. And next weekend and beyond. <laughs> First pitch to Elam is a little up. Ball one. Now they tried the bunt on the first pitch with Jana Johns. I wonder if maybe with a 1-0 count, this could be a situation with Nina, uh, Taylor Snow over at first that they might try to hit and run. Yeah, especially knowing what Lindsay Elam's been doing. She's been putting the ball in play. Solid contact. There goes the runner hit and run and has mm. popped a third to Sanchez who throws to first and doubles off Snow to end things here in the fourth. Well, we had the play call. We had it called. We did. We just jinxed it. <laughs> we head to the fifth <laughs> inning. Oklahoma leads Team Mexico 1-0 on Sooner Sports TV presented today. There's Nicole Mendez here in the Coca-Cola fifth inning. Sooners lead it 1-0. You heard the pride that she has in being part of this Mexican national team as the first pitch is popped foul by Amanda Sanchez for strike one. It's got to be something pretty special for Nicole Mendez, the other three players currently on active collegiate rosters. You heard Coach Gasso mention that, you know, maybe there's a possibility that there still could be some other current college players, maybe even one of Nicole Mendez's teammates who could join her on this Mexican national team squad, but yeah, it's got to be an incredible feeling as the 0-1 pitch just misses because Mexico had never made the Olympics in softball. They played in the World Games, Pan Am, and to have this opportunity to help them qualify, it's just got to be cool. Yeah, and you know, to hear just the the humility and how humble yeah. Nicole Mendez is. She goes, you know, I've wanted this since I was a little girl, and hopefully there's there's another little girl watching with the foul ball for strike two, but hopefully there's another little girl watching going, you know what, I can do this one day, just like Nicole Mendez. One ball, two strikes. There's nobody out here as we just start things off in the top of the fifth inning. Sooners leading this game 1-0. It'll be Sanchez, the third baseman, and Palacios and Ari Diaz. They're in the fifth for Mexico. One, two, pop foul and out of play. I'm not trying to dance around, but there's a really good chance G. Juarez could end up on this roster. It's kind of, yeah. I, I wasn't trying to be, you know, too secretive about it, but I think if I'm sitting in that Team Mexico dugout last night and I saw G. Juarez pitch, I'd mm -hmm. be doing whatever I could to see more of her and try to get her. No question. And, you know, it's the deeper the staff, the better the team. One, two pitches up high, two and two. And again, it's we got a long ways to go, not just in this softball season, but before we finally get to Japan. But, you know, Taylor McQuillan, Daniello, too, both looked very hittable last night. They brought in Karian, uh, Karian out of the pen, and she was lit up pretty well by the Sooner attack. So you can always use more arms. The 2-2 bounced hard towards short. Lions backs up on it, flips, throws, didn't get it. Just as Lions tried to plant, her feet went out from under her. And she has a smile on her face and frustration, and she still almost got Sanchez at first. She made that a close play, and I tell you what, this is just one of those things you can't you can't control, you know. And nothing that she did wrong beat Good it call. by a half step. Good call over at first. We give the umpires a hard enough time when they get one right, like Larry Nagel did over at first. You got to give him that virtual fist bump. Well done. Now runner at first for Sasha Palacios in the first pitch from. Sale is in for a strike. Palacios singled on a ball that hit off the glove of Grace Lyons into center field. It's the only hit that Team Mexico has so far. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to rule that 
a single for Sanchez, I would think. Yeah, I think they're probably having the conversation. Oh, one is a little bit in. No, I could see Patrick Dunn, by the way, is, is the official score. He's the media relations guy. He's the social media guy. He does it all for Sooner Softball, and he's a great dude. But I could see that conversation you're having that, hey, it's not her fault that she slipped, but if she doesn't slip... She, it's an easy, it's a it's routine an easy play. Out. Yeah, 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss strike, too. Yeah, it's kind of one of those, you know, but you look at it on the other end, she beat out an infield ground ball. So it's, yeah, that's a tough one. And, by the way, you don't have to make that call right now. So it's one that even, you know, you can talk to some of the people in the press box. A lot of times, if you want to pull back the curtain, they'll talk with the other SID. The one, two is fouled back. And sometimes after a game is, is over, there might be uh, someone that says, hey, was that an error really in the fourth? And <laughs> yeah. Well, you also look at it, too, from a pitching standpoint. That's right. Tough to, tough to lay the hit on Shannon Sale. One ball, two strikes. A runner at first with nobody out in the fifth. The pitch. Ground ball to third. Could be two to second for one. Quick throw to first. Oh, bring her up. 5-4-3 double play. And Jana Johns is having a day with the leather at third. There's two away in the fifth. What a play by Jana Johns. And this ball was not hit very hard. So to go into the 5-6 hole and just shovel. And she... It was close worked. at first. She barely got her. But what a play. Great call again by Larry Nagel over at first base. He is having himself a day. Two outs now for Stefania Aridias. She tries to bunt and bunts it foul on the first pitch. Aradias laid down the sack bunt when Jana Johns came charging in from third and it from was running down the line to first on a sacrifice bunt. Jana Johns has been impressive today. She's impressive every day defensively, but I mean she has made some plays that really have kind of on the sack bunt, that would have been a tough play. Yeah. She very well could have, could have beat that out. Or, as the 0-1 pitch misses low, a ball and a strike. I mean, you, you're throwing across your body, and even though you practice it and you work on it a lot, you could throw it down the first base line, and it ends up in right field. A lot of things could happen on a play like that. Here's the 1-1. Swing and a miss strike, too. Yeah, you know, that moment, that sack bunt kind of was a little bit of a game changer. Two outs were in the fifth. One ball, two strikes. Sooners lead it 1 0. Sale brings it home. A little up. Waiting on deck is Sierra Romero. This is still kind of odd for me to play one game in a day. <laughs> when you're in early season, it's like, hey, coming up next, coming up later. Oh, wait, no, there's coming up tomorrow. Truly getting into conference play here. The 2 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Unfair. Shannon Sale. What an inning. What a performance from the Sooner Super Senior. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Oklahoma leads it 1 0. First pitch to Mendez here in the fifth is to the backstop from Sierra Highland. Little up. Along with DJ Sanchez, I'm Chris Plank. Got a great crew helping us out today. Grant, Ray, uh, Grant Wade producing on the TV side. Eric King, our radio producer. Joel Manning on site. Parker Johnson, our director. Justin Strain, who does not like vowels, is our technical director today. The 1-0 pitch popped up to left field. Should be an easy play, but that ball died quick and falls right in front of Cervantes. Little maybe miscommunication between her and Romero, and it's going to end up being a base hit for Nicole Mendez. I thought that either Cervantes or Romero would have an easy play on that, and I don't know, maybe Cervantes didn't see it all that well right off the bat. Yeah, you know, and Romero's going back hard, but Cervantes had to have gotten a bad jump on that ball because that's a long way for your shortstop to go. And again, we'll see the late call by Cervantes typically. Mm. Here's Jada Coleman with a runner at first and nobody out. She shows bunt, pulls it back, takes a ball. By the way, continue big thanks to our outstanding TV crew. Uh, Lily's back on EBS today, Caravan Dorn on audio. And our entire camera crew, Lewis Baylor, Michael Field, doing a great job calling all the action. In fact, Lewis Rendon, who is our cameraman behind home plate, is actually our Spanish analyst for the Sooner Football Radio Network. 
he and I might have to trade jobs yes. coming up. Have him call an inning or two as the 0-1 is rifled to third. Caught, they throw to first and pull the double play. Oh, man, what a play by Sanchez, who was in tight. And a laser off the bat of Coleman, and she snags it and turns two. We saw this earlier off the ball off Romero's bat. You can't hit a ball much better than that. And what a play, throwing from the knees. Wow. Again, can't do much if you're Nicole Mendez. You just got to freeze, try to get back. And she did. And that's how good Sanchez is over at third. Two outs for Jocelyn Allo, who swings through the first pitch for strike one. You know, that's just pure arm strength. You know, down, off, off a knee, kind of off balance a little bit, and being able to throw a bullet to first base. That's just showing pure arm strength. Jocelyn Allo will make up for it, hitting this 0-1 pitch over the wall, right? No, oh, she couldn't hold her swing back. 0-2. Jossie is 0 for 2 on the day. Strikeout victim in the first. Flight out to left on a ball that just didn't quite have enough juice to get out of here. Allo, the nation's leader with 19 home runs. You name an offensive category, she's at or near the top in college softball right now. The 0-2, ooh, one in her eyes, and she fouled it straight back. Allo has been, she's been consistent. She's been, you know, because I think I say this every time we talk about Allo, but when you have big power numbers like that, consistency many times is an issue. And mm -hmm. she is consistent in what she does. She is not just a power hitter. She is a complete hitter. She pokes one foul. No two on a pitch. That was a little bit off the play. We... Grant, I waited until the bottom of the fifth to overly promote the podcast today, so at least I get that. We had Jocelyn on a couple weeks ago on the podcast, and the term she kept using is locked in. The O2 is well outside. You can find that in the archives right now, Soonersports.com slash podcast. But not just herself being locked in, but this entire lineup being locked in. And she even joked that what really got her focused is when she realized all the talent they had, she wasn't going to lose her spot to anyone. As the one two was high for ball two. You know, and that's that's what makes this program what it is. I mean, it's you've got someone like Allo who's going, I better kick it in gear, you know, or or some of these some of these new new players are going to come in and and steal my spot. She did add especially to a freshman, which I got to kick. Yeah, I was going to say that, but. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the 2-2 two -two to Allo, and she waits on a, an off-speed pitch and hits a base hit in the left field right past Sid Romero. So extend the hitting streak so when this thing continues next weekend, we can say, oh, yeah, but she had hits in both the Friday and Saturday game. And she's one for three on the day. We haven't seen Highland change speeds effectively too much. Um, and again, kind of the change up. Great job by Allo reading it a little bit up in the zone and just reloading and being able to turn on it. T.R.A. Jennings has been on base both times. With the Sooners up 1-0, Oklahoma could use some insurance runs heading to the sixth inning. And Jennings takes the first pitch low and in for ball one. T.R.A. walked in the first. Singleton was stranded at third in the third. She bats here with a runner at first and two outs to 1-0. Is line deep to center field. Could be trouble. It's off the wall. Allo on her way to third. She'll beat the throw. Jennings will take off her second and slide in safely with a laser shot off the wall that puts runners at second and third with two outs for the Sooners here in the fifth. That is, I know we saw the bomb early in the game from Lindsey Elam, but that is one of the hardest hit balls we've had at this ballpark today. It bounced off the wall. I need my exit speed on that one, Sam Martyr. Holy smokes. And I tell you what, Jocelyn Allo, she had scoring on the mind. She had that look in her eye when yep. she rounded second. She was waiting for that go sign. Urtez came up and missed. She should have been coming up firing straight to second base. Missed the on the throw, allowing. That's a, Tell you what, that's a hard hit single but allowing yeah. Jennings to get to second base. Yeah, that, that's a crazy thing. You see Jennings standing on second base, but it's a single, and she advanced to second on the throw in. This should be first and third right now, but again, as you mentioned, and, and your test may be similar to Sid. Sid Romero had not played outfield. I talked to her before the game, and she had not played outfield prior to playing some center field last week for Team Mexico. So I would imagine for your test, it's fairly similar. She's been an infield most of her life. Yeah, and she played the ball well off the wall and it just kind of came up. You could kind of see a little bit off balance to make that throw. First pitch to Kinsey Hansen is a little bit up. Ball one. Now, something that has been 
fairly consistent today has been Highland putting a few at the backstop, which becomes a storyline to keep an eye on here in this at bat with runners at second and third. Kinsey Hansen is two for two on the day. Couple of singles. She takes the 1-0 pitch up, ball two. Yeah, you know, in Plank, I was telling you earlier, on a break ago, she, Highland, I think some of her success, she's effectively wild. <laughs> you know, and I, I don't mean that as a knock at all. No. I mean, it's, it's something that, that is a bit of an art, the way that she goes about setting up hitters. 2-0. <laughs> a little up and in, ball three. You know, if you're Highland here, you've got Hanson, two for two, you're down, 3-0, -oh, two outs. Do you go after Grace Lyons? Right. We saw them effectively pitch around Jossie in a late inning at bat last night, 3-0, -oh, and that's in a roundabout way what Highland did there, though I think she was mad she didn't get that call. That's Bases are loaded. It's a pretty good 3-0 -oh spot. And... That's going to bring a trip to the circle from Carlos Caro. If you missed it in our pregame show, Carlos Caro and Carlos Bernaldez, the co-head coaches, were not happy with the way that this team performed yesterday. So instead of a post-game that included a, an immediate trip back to the hotel and a post-game meal, they had a practice after the game last night, which included some hitting and some sprints, which is never a good sign <laughs> after a game. That's never a good day. But, you know, at the end of the day, too, I mean, he's dealing with a team full of, of women who he's kind of going, you know, this is not this is not how we do things. That's right. And it's, it's not time to go back and, and eat a meal and just wash it off. Grace Lines takes the first pitch for a ball. It was a very quick meeting. In fact, Jennifer Rocha had made her way over to the Sooner dugout to talk to the hitters, and by the time she got over there with Coach Gasso, she immediately had to turn around and retreat to the first base coach's box. The 1 0 is high. They'll throw behind Hanson again, who slides back in safely. Lyons is 0 for 2. A pop out to second, a fly out to short. I would say the do factor is pretty high here for Grace to put one in play. 2-0 pitch misses low. Pardon me, 1-0 pitch misses low ball two. Or is it 3-0? It's 3-0. 3-0. Not bad. Yeah, that's, that's a good spot, but Highland hasn't been getting that call all day. And we haven't seen Shannon Sale get that call much either. Three balls, no strikes, two outs. Base is loaded. The pitch. Ooh, called strike on a ball that Lions tried to sell a bit with a little bit of a bend. 3-1. A run on eight hits for the Sooners. Lions shot right at Sid at short to end the inning. So Lions hit it hard. Patty Gasso pats her hands in frustration, but the Sooners hold on to a 1-0 lead as we head to the sixth championship in the spring. So Lindsey Gray Walton's team as the first pitch to start this sixth inning is in for a strike to Sierra Romero. The volleyball team will play its spring home opener on Friday against TCU. In fact, last night, Saw Drake Steinberg and Kyle Walton, two members of the volleyball staff, were here supporting Sooner softball last night as the 0-1 is in for a strike 0-2. So, volleyball should be a fun one next Friday night. And that's a look at upcoming Sooner Athletic events presented by Kincaid Coach Lines. Romero is 0-for-1, popped out to short in the third. Sooners lead this 1-0. We're in the top of the sixth inning. A run on eight hits for the Sooners, just two hits for Team Mexico. And a swing and a miss. Another strikeout. For Shannon Sale, that's five on the game, back-to-back -back Ks to the top of the line. She's looked great here today. She has in a great setup. We saw Shannon Sale work in the inside corner, got the call low and in, and then got Romero reaching on the outside corner with the curveball. Great setup. Here's Anissa Yurtez. She's 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. First pitch from Sale is grounded slowly towards third. John's up with it, throws off. Oh. Tough scoop at first. Snow can't come up with it. I don't know if John's got everything on that throw she wanted to. And Yurtez is aboard. And this is kind of like one of those swinging bunts. See on the throw, we get a little mm. off balance. But I, I think Urtez may have beat that out regardless. 
of if the throw had been up in the chest. A very quick decision on the scoring to credit Mexico with a hit here. Sid Romero steps to the plate. Have to be careful here if you're the Sooners. Yeah, she is a hard hit 0 for 2 today. And the first pitch is in for a strike as Sid showed bunt. I don't think she liked that call too terribly much. Well, we've seen quite a few Team Mexico players turn around and kind of, I'm sure, ask very nicely. <laughs> but uh, maybe feeling a little inconsistency with the strike zone. No balls in one strike. Sale. So a pop one foul, slicing out of play and out of reach for Taylor Snow. It's got to be pretty cool, too, earlier this year. Jessica Cootie had put together a feature on Tiare Jennings, who's out at second for the Sooners, and how Sid Romero was her idol whenever she was growing up and playing. And to be able to play against her, they practice every day on the same field, but to be in competition against her has got to be great as the 0-2 is poked foul. And when I say practice, Sid is a member of the Sooner staff, so she, she's helping out to coach things for Coach Gasso, but obviously has been with Team Mexico quite a bit. She was with him last week. Uh, you know, and also, too, I mean, we talk about what T.R.A. Jennings is doing as a freshman. A lot of that, too. Obviously, the respect for Coach Gasso, mm -hmm. Coach Rocha, and, and Coach J.T. Gasso. Um, but having that, that experience coming from someone like Sid Romero. Yep. Sid knows behind on the count here, 0-2, the pitch from Sale. She pokes one to right field, could be trouble, but Mendez races in to make the catch. And there's two away. Sid's 0 for 3. And two outs for Chelsea Gonzalez. You have the absolute attention, if you're T.R.A. Jennings, of T.R.A. Jennings every time you speak when you're Sid Romero. So you're right, it has to help quite a bit in her development. You know, and Sid Romero's been there. Yep. Was, you know, it's, it's hard. It is hard being a freshman, and especially in a program like this. Chelsea Gonzalez fouls the first pitch back. She got a good piece of that for strike one. 1-0 Sooners were in the sixth. Last night, Oklahoma had 18 hits. They have eight here today. I mean, that's 26 hits in two games. Scoring runs in a variety of ways. Today, it's been a long ball and fantastic pitching from Shannon Sale. The 0-1 is popped up. Should do it. Sale wants to make the play and makes the catch in this circle. Oklahoma, impressive today with Shannon Sale dominating in the circle. They lead it 1-0, heading to the bottom of the sixth inning on Sooner Sports TV. Well, pitcher of the year, but boy, the Sooners were really seeing her well last night as we had the bottom of the sixth. Oklahoma leads it 1-0. First pitch to Taylor Snow is in for a strike. O'Toole in two and two-thirds against the Sooners allowed nine hits, four runs, and walked one and did not have a strikeout. 0-1. Swing and a miss. Yeah, last night definitely did not go for O'Toole how she would have won. It was not a really great outing for her. The Sooners, even some of their outs were hard hit outs. Um, seeing O'Toole well. Um, we know the skill that O'Toole has. She gets Snow to pop this one foul and out of play. But the Sooners, the Sooners did not make her look real great yesterday. I mean, they, they made pretty quick work of her. O'Toole does, as we mentioned quite a bit during yesterday's broadcast, own a win over the Sooners as the 0-2 is a swing and a miss. That's the first strikeout for O'Toole in two games, and she gets the first batter she faces here on a Saturday afternoon. Good pitch. And O'Toole came in. She's working quick. Got the drop ball, and that just fell off the table. Great two-strike pitch there for O'Toole. Janet Johns is 0-2, but has played fantastic defensively at third. First pitch from O'Toole is, well, she's spinning it today. That's in for a strike. Those extra sprints last night must have really caught her attention. Yeah, she's got a little bit of a different look to her today. She's working quicker. Um, you know, we, we didn't see a lot of that a great movement yesterday. And what we've seen so far, she's dealing. Goes with a fastball and misses a ball and a strike. The win that she has over Oklahoma, I was talking about this with JT before the game, goes back to 2017 when the Sooners traveled to Long Beach State and played Arizona as the 1-1 pitch is bounced foul. It was a spring break trip. O'Toole squared off against Paige Parker and 
want to say that Page had something ridiculous like 18 strikeouts in that game. But a late inning error ended up costing the Sooners the win, which sounds as rare as it actually is. And Arizona won that game. Here's the one two from O'Toole. Poke foul and out of play. It has, I'll say this much, it's been fun this weekend with this Team Mexico series to go back and think about some of the matchups that these members of the Mexican national team have had against the Sooners. You can think about Sid Romero's career. But yeah, it's, that was one heck of a game. On March 14th, Tool V. Parker, here's the one, two. Hit hard off the glove of the first baseman, Vidalis, and Johns is going to beat it out. Gonzalez couldn't get there quick enough. I think Vidalis was caught between going to chase it and trying to beat Johns back to the bag or let Gonzalez make the play. And she waited on Gonzalez, but it's the first hit of the game for Gianna Johns. And Vidalis made the right decision here. She wasn't going to win that foot race on her way back. But again, just kind of scooted out into no man's land there. I was close in the strikeouts for Paige Parker, okay. by the way, just to close the book on was that. Was it 19? It was 13. Okay. So, I mean, I, I, I consider being within five to be close is Lindsey Elam, who has had a great weekend so far, homered earlier. That's the only run of the game, takes a strike. O'Toole, by the way, in that game, complete game five hitter, did allow three runs, walked just three, but struck out five. Paige Parker, six and two-thirds with the game-winning run, scored with two outs. The 0-1. Elam tried to hold it on a ball that was well up and out of the strike zone and did. Paige Parker, 13 strikeouts, one walk. Struck out 13 of the 28 batters she faced. 128 pitches that game. Have a day, Paige Parker. Elam, have a day, homered, <laughs> and has five hits on the weekend, including a four-for-four four performance last night. The 1-1 one -one has bounced foul at the plate. Grace Green has moved into the on-deck circle for the Sooners. Debriefing with DJ Gas or JT Gasso. Sorry, JT. That DJ on my mind with DJ Sanchez here next to me. One ball, two strikes. One zero Sooners in the bottom of the sixth inning. Elam waits the pitch. Bounce hard to short. This could be two. Romero to second for one. Elam beats it out at first. And Grace Green will get it at bat with Elam at first on the fielder's choice. All these incredible notes that are put together by Patrick Dunn and the media relations department. I'm not trying to get ahead of myself, but when was the last time the Sooners had a 1-0 win? Ooh. <laughs> I like where your head's at. That's a good stat. It's, I, I feel like is, again, Patty Gasso debriefing now with home plate umpire Terry Holt to enter not only Grace Green, uh, Grace Green to pinch hit here, but to also run Riley Boone. So Riley Boone will be called upon as the Sooner pinch runner. At least I think she is. Now she's jogging back to the dugout. Oh, so I want to make sure she has the... We were just talking about this a couple of innings ago to make sure you have the proper wristband. She wanted to make sure she had the right call sheet. And she'll head back over to first base. So, Riley Boone pinch runs. Grace Green will pinch hit. <laughs> One zip Sooners. Boy, what a spot here for Grace Green to try to open this game up. It is, and you know, trying to kind of go, when was the last time that the Sooners had a 1-0 victory? Talk about just, I love that this is such a tight game. You know, Great challenge. Yes. As Grace Green fouls this one back. But this is what games are going to look like getting into conference play. This is what postseason games look like. You know, as much as we love to see the 11-0 wins all the time, it's 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 not realistic. I mean, as you, as you get deeper into season and pitching staffs get a little bit more seasoned, if you will, it's you're going to start seeing these tight games. And you want to see how your team responds. No balls and a strike. Green's ready. The pitch with the runner not going. She pops it up and gets. Just over the netting. Bounces around on the concourse. I got to admit, I was a little bit surprised in my research here. The last 1-0 game the Sooners were in. A little bit more recent than I expected. I was expecting to be scrolling back for quite a while. Their June 2nd game 
in the 2019 Women's College World Series. They lost in extra innings to Alabama 1-0. Earlier that season, they won one zip over Grand Canyon U here in Norman. It's part of the Courtyard Marriott Tournament. Here's the 0-2 pitch to Gray Screen. It's well outside. We were just talking about that game when we were at GC trip. Re Aguiar. Six innings allowed just four sooner hits. It's 1-0 here in the bottom of the sixth. The pitch to Green. She bounces it foul. Boone was going. I don't think Riley at first had realized the ball was fouled off, so she'll get back to first base. I have not seen Riley wear the sliding glove before either. Yeah. Right on her left hand to make sure that you don't jam up any fingers whenever you're going into the base. The things they have nowadays. It's a cool toy. <laughs> I'd yes, wear, it is. I'd wear everything they'd let me. The one, two is up high. I'd have an Evo shield on each elbow, on each <laughs> shin. <laughs> Go up there looking like a transformer. But those Evo shields are big time. There's not, uh, there's not much of a worse feeling in the world to get in hitting the elbow or fouling a ball off your shin. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch to Green. Well outside, ball three. And O'Toole, who had looked pretty dominant through the first couple of hitters. And even on the... Well, they're not going to give Janet Johns a hit, by the way. They have ruled out an error on Vidalis at first base. It did come right off her glove. Even on that, she should be out of this inning, the 3-2, and she is out of the inning. She throws one right by Gray, screen strike three called. Sooners three outs away from a win as we head to the seven. Oklahoma leads Team Mexico 1-0 on Sooner Sports TV, presented by Bud Light. Oh, Shannon Sale has been something here today. The Sooner senior with five Ks allowed just three hits and everything's been working. I know she's impressed you today, DJ. She has. This has been lights out from Shannon Sale, and she has been on her work. Every spot is deliberate, and she has really dominated these Team Mexico hitters so far. And to come, to come away with the win, she'll have to take care of the heart of the lineup, as Brittany Cervantes will lead things off. If she takes the first pitch for a ball. And I love seeing Shannon Sale in this spot. 1-0 ball game, late in the game. This is, this is what is going to make her better a month from now when they're in the late game of a tight Big 12. Absolutely. Here's the 1-0 from Sale. Oh, a good pitch just misses a little in. Two balls and no strikes. This is where Shannon Sale has excelled this season when she's called upon to close a game. Now, typically, she hasn't thrown six innings leading into it, but what a fun opportunity to see her come out and try to take care of this in complete game. Passion is her 2-0. Pitch misses low and in. Ball three. Big out here for Shannon Sale. We've seen her. Shannon Sale's success has come today from working ahead in the count. We haven't seen her behind in counts much today. She's only walked the one batter and came in the four. She finds the strike zone on the three up. Three and one. That only walk was with one out to Chelsea Gonzalez in the fourth inning. Tori Vidalis is on deck. Here's the three one from Sale. Ball's hit high and deep to left field. If it's fair, it could be trouble. It hooks foul into the Sooner bullpen. Jocelyn Allo was chasing it down. And now Sale has worked all the way back to run the count full. And we, again, Sale has been dominant today. And I feel like here with two strikes, I think the strike zone has been a little inconsistent today. This is where something close, Shannon Sale deserves the nod. 3-2. And line foul. No defensive changes for the Sooners. Coleman stays in center with Mendez in right, Allo in left. Kinsey Hansen has gone the whole way behind the plate with Snow at first, Jennings at second, Lyons at short, Jana Johns at third. 
Another full count pitch. Sale is ready. She brings it home. Pop foul again. Out of play. Watch out. Cervantes is not going to go down without a fight. I think Sale's here for it. I think she. Yes. I think she's welcoming this challenge right now. Long look at the call. Sales ready. The 3-2. Ball four. Missed high. And the tying run is aboard for Team Mexico here in the top of the seventh inning. And at least from our perspective, it doesn't look like there is anyone up and throwing in the Sooner pen. I see G. Juarez is down there. I don't think there's any action. Nicole May has just grabbed the ball, and she'll start throwing for the Sooners. That's Nicole number 19. A lot of Thede in there as well. First pitch swinging, a little looper to Lyons, who makes the catch on the hot shot from Vidalis, and there's one away. Huge out, great job rebounding from the leadoff walk. You hate to see the leadoff walk, but great pitch here. Keeping the ball in the air. Huge out for Shannon Sale. Here's Amanda Sanchez. One for two on the day. The lefty. The third base play today has been fantastic. And she pops the first pitch she sees out of play. Yeah, we've seen it from both sides. I mean, we were, we've talked so much about the, the offense that we've seen in the pitching. But, man, we have, we have really gotten to see some tremendous defensive plays on both sides of the ball. Sale went the distance against Missouri in a Sooners 11-0 win. But again, that was a, a run rule win. Last outing, she started only three innings against Houston. The 0-1, she shows bunt, takes strike two. That five-inning complete game against Missouri, which did feature eight strikeouts. She only threw 67 pitches. Here today, she's only thrown 71 in six and a third. Not bad. Not at all. That means you are hitting spots. She's ahead on the count 0-2 to the pitch. Poked foul and over the bleachers beyond the Sooner dugout down the third baseline. The only run in this game, a solo home run by Lindsey Elam in the bottom of the second inning. Oklahoma leads it 1-0. We're in the top of the seven. Waiting on deck, Sasha Palacios. Shannon Sale wants a different softball, plays a little give me a new one. I right, one more new one. Now she's ready. Runner at first, one out. Runner is Cervantes. She's unlikely to go, but here's a ground ball off sale. It ricochets to Snow, who will take it to the bag. And there's two away, but let's check on Shannon Sale. She mm. looks like she's okay, but, I mean, something like that. You hold your breath for a minute. Ooh, that hit right off her knee. Jen Rocha immediately out to check, and it... She kind of arched her back a little bit after the shot off her knee. Not Jennifer Rocha puts her arm, gives her a little pat on the shoulder. Brittany Bump is the Sooner athletic trainer. She hasn't been called upon as of yet. See Sale kind of moving that knee a little bit. <laughs> Smile <laughs> on her face. That's always a good sign. Man, you know, one more look at that. Good look at Jennifer. She's done a great job with the Sooner pitchers in her three seasons here. Really worked hard with Shannon Sale. Now she'll debrief with Coach Gasso as she heads back to the dugout. That was a hard hit ball. Good job. First base, top of the dugout, our camera guy. I can't tell who's over there, but great job. That was a tough shot. Well, we're ready to play, and Shannon's not messing around. First pitch is fouled back. Got Michael. Good job, Mike. Good Good shot of that, and it looked like, at least on that first pitch, everything okay yeah, from Sale. Knowing that she's okay, talk about getting kind of a lucky bounce. 
you know, that, that, that could have bounced off and gone any direction. So right. kind of a little bit of luck there bouncing right there to be, may be able to make a play. The 0-1 pitch is, boy, that ball, if that's not a strike, I don't know what is. Is it just misses low? Yeah, I, I truly one believe when, when a pitcher has been around the zone and has been consistent all game, it gets late in the game, you get that call. She did. She did not. <laughs> and I have an issue with that. 1-1 one, one is looped to the left field. Could be trouble. It falls in front of Alo. Rounding third and heading home to try to score the tying run is Cervantes. And she's safe. The ball gets away from Kinsey Hansen, but Sale is there to back it up. And in the top of the seventh inning with two outs, Palacio has tied this game with an RBI single. And this ball was not hit really hard. It just found no man's land out there in left field. And you had got to know that Cervantes, she was getting sent the entire time. Yeah, there was no doubt that when she rounded, or when she even took off for third, that she was rounding third and heading home. I don't think Carlos Caro even hesitated after that ball hit the turf to sin. Cervantes and we are knotted up at one. So a pinch hitter here in Stefania Ariadiz's spot as last night Desiree Hernandez was in the starting lineup. She went 0 for 1 as the pinch or the designated player. She'll bat here for Arya Diaz, who was 0 for 1 with a sack bunt. With a runner at second, that's the go-ahead runner now. And the first pitch from Sale is in for a strike. <laughs> Looks like that action has picked up a bit in the Sooner pin, at least judging by some body language. Here's the 0-1 from Sale. Ground ball to first. Shouldn't matter as Snow takes it to the bag and ends the inning. But Mexico has knotted this game up at one. Sooners will look to walk it off when we come back. Oklahoma and Team Mexico tied at one on Sooner Sports TV. Jada Coleman will lead things off for the Sooners. And Jocelyn Allo waits on deck. Coleman, who has hit the ball hard today after her first inning strikeout, including an incredible play by Sanchez at third, her last at bat that led to a double play, and she swings and lofts the first pitch into shallow right center field. It falls. Coleman's off to the races. Rounding second and heading for third. They'll hold her up after a misplayed ball in right center field. Puts the winning run at third with nobody out here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Coleman, I mean, she was hustling off the bat. This is, I'm going to be honest, this is a pretty routine play, but you can kind of see just miscommunication there. Right in between left and center, or excuse me, right and center field. And again, with a reminder that, you know, Nicole Mendes is probably going to be their center fielder. Yep. Yurtez is a short stop playing in the outfield. Time is called before they can even throw the pitch to Alo and Carlos Caro. The co-head coach uh, jogs out to talk to O'Toole. I don't, I'm sure he's going to give her an opportunity to pitch to Alo. I don't know if they will pitch to Alo, but we know this season that when you pitch to Alo, there's usually a price to pay. 19 home runs. She's had a hit in each of these games, but again, her hitting streak is paused for the moment because of these ex exhibition games. Sits at 36. She's had a hit in every game so far this season. Well, here's the thing. You throw around Allo, you got Tiara Jennings and Hanson. They are four for four. And by the way, Tiara Jennings, who's sitting in the three hole, is currently third in the country in home runs. So you pitch her on the number one home run hitter. You got the number three home run hitter. Oh, and by the way, Hanson's top five. She's fourth in the country with 13 home runs. It's unbelievable. Pick your poison. And all it takes here is a fly ball to win this game. First pitch to Jossie is a little up for a ball. Has so many options here. Nobody out, runner on third, so many things that can get done. Here's the 1 0 to Allah. Outside ball two. Mm. That's a good spot. 
Really good spot. Almost wonder if maybe they're strategically pitching a rounder here. The 2-0 is inside ball three. At this point, 3-0, you put her on base. You don't give the opportunity. She might swing at something 3-0 here might. if it's anywhere close. <laughs> she takes a strike. She was. I, I think that Jossie had stepped out before that pitch, but knowing that she was going to take it regardless of where it was. Now she's dialed in. Runner at third, 1-1 one, one game, bottom of the seventh inning. The pitch, ball four. Could she, would she potentially try to walk this off on a first and third play? I was, you, we're, we are on the same wavelength, Link. I was kind of th sitting here going, how cute is Coach Gasso going to get with this? <laughs> Mackenzie Donahue, by the way, will be called upon a pinch run for the Sooners. You know, um, now with that being said, you also got to remember you have Sid Romero at short. You do. So she understands. In fact, as Donahue comes in to pinch run, Romero brought everyone together yep. in the circle. So you're dealing with someone that saw this for four years and now the last two years as a member of the staff in practice. There might not be anyone more prepared to potentially defend this than Sid Romero at short. Great point, DJ. You know, and so Sid's not going to get fooled. Palacios has a good arm. You got nobody out. Could get interesting here. Infield is in for Mexico, and the first pitch to Jennings is outside for a ball. Tiare last night went three for four, and in her first two at bats, one of those three hits against O'Toole. The 1 0. Base hit, center field, win column shooters, walk it off. Tiare Jennings, Oklahoma, knocks off Team Mexico two to one on a walk off base hit from the freshman Tiare Jennings, who sent it right back where it came from. And Oklahoma has won the series over Team Mexico and will go for the sweep tomorrow at noon. What a piece of hitting by Jennings. Tiare Jennings has stepped up and is clutch. This is huge. Bottom of the seventh. You can't write it up any better than that. Back, but Shannon Sale was great today from start to finish, hitting her spots and got some big strikeouts when she needed it. Complete game for Shannon Sale. Scatters the three hits. You mentioned the big strikeouts. Five strikeouts, and they came at pretty key moments during the game, too. Uh, at least two of those strikeouts with runners on base, one with a runner in scoring position back in the third inning. Final stats brought to you by Taco Mayo, Fresh Mex. Uh, Shannon Sale, that complete game four hitter, striking out five, walking two. Lindsey Elam had the solo home run in the second, which carried the suitors until they needed the run in the bottom of the seventh inning. But they still pounded out 10 hits here today. They have 28 hits in two games. That's, gosh, that's not a stat you like to see if you are the Team Mexico pitching staff. But only putting two runs on the board, but this was not a quiet offense today. Yeah, yeah. Fresh Mex, fresh ingredients built to order. Well, there is Lindsey Elam's home run, which carried this team. I mean, that was a no-doubter to center field until the seventh inning, or until the seventh inning. That's when that little blooper just found enough room to allow the tying run to score as Sanchez scored from second. But count on the freshman, T.R.A. Jennings, just a nice piece of hitting back up the middle. And Oklahoma wins it by a final score of 2-1. to one. Jada Coleman comes in with the game-winning run. That is our OG&E play of the game. OG&E, we energize life.